One week with Fedora 37. Using Fedora in the past has been a mixed bag of experiences and overall has been awful for me. But I've always come back around to this distro for the promises it's been working to make a reality. Fedora comes with expectations baked in. Some would say more expectations than most distros. The expectations I personally have when coming to Fedora, a stable system, a system that's unbreaking when multitasking between workflows, a secure system, security out of the box with SE Linux, which I'm very interested in trying out with all of the other Red Hat specialties, bleeding edge, packages as close to date as possible without being Arch, which was my first love, company backed. For better or for worse, Red Hat and IBM mean Fedora can be as awesome as it is, and so far it has remained awesome to those it has worked for. Top tier packaging. RPMs are ancient as debs and as prevalent. Flat packs are awesome, even if you have to manually enable FlatHub in Fedora 37. Searchable solutions. If there is an issue for you in Fedora, it's as easy to search for as in Ubuntu or Arch, and those solutions are easily translatable to Fedora's user land. Now, before I really settled in with Fedora with the Tuesday release, I had previously been using Ubuntu 22.10, and that is an awesome experience. Ubuntu 22.10 has been an extra nice experience for me so far. I expect these distros to get even better over the next year, and especially with the 2404 LTS. Fedora 37 beta was a secondary partition on my machine before installing 37 release on last Tuesday. During the beta, I had only set up Doom Emacs, GIMP, and my Realtek Wi-Fi, which is still a chicken and egg situation. I'm very thankful to Moriner on GitHub for the 8821CU package that enables the kernel module for the Realtek Wi-Fi. The upgrade from beta to 37 was as simple as shutting down the computer and restarting. As easy as you want it to be. Every setting I had set up and every application I had installed stayed the same. My home partition, my root partitions were obviously separated, but in all my years of Linux experience, I had not actually had performed this clean of an upgrade. So in the end, this is probably not outside the norm for most users. However, it was an extra nice experience for me. One thing to note going into Fedora 37 is that half the software you'll want is in FlatHub. And FlatHub is not enabled in Flatpak by default. So you'll have to run the following command to easily add the FlatHub repo. From here, I'm gonna go through a little walkthrough on what I have installed on my computer and what I've done post-update. So first things out of the box, I downloaded GNOME Tweak Tool, the Conf Editor, CMake, Thunderbird, Lossless Cut, OBS, Blender, Chrome, Code, RetroArch, Steam, Lutris, Git Kraken, Element, and I follow DT's DNF conf instructions from his YouTube video on Fedora 37. DNF.conf does not even have it even like a, as a comment. This is weird. You'd think they'd even have a comment letting people know this is even possible. I think a, a, a good number of parallel downloads is something probably five to ten would do. Let's just choose five for max parallel downloads here. Part of the problem is these mirrors that we're trying to grab software from are slow. Fastest mirror, all one word, equals true with a capital T. Shout out to DT. Now I did also download KDEN Live which I ended up not using because I'm just more familiar with OpenShot. And also GTK3, no CSD, which I was trying to use to enable uh, GTK Chrome on Qt Windows. But overall, what it did was just remove the Chrome entirely. A couple of things that I've learned throughout this process is how to use uh, FC list to find fonts. Seems simple. And then piping history into NL, which just provides wide numbers to output. Very simple couple of things that are really nice to know. Now, as for the theme that you've been seeing on screen, it is a GTK theme. I'm not using uh, Qt for as much as possible. My cursor, you're probably going to recognize as being the oxygen white cursor theme. The icons you'll probably recognize as being the Numix square icons. The shell you may not recognize, but it is the Nordic shell. The legacy applications theme is going to be for Tokyo Night Storm B, which is an also little known GTK theme. And then also the wallpaper that you're seeing I made with GIMP. Now there's a couple of things that didn't work. RetroArch, LibRetro, PCSX 2 core. So the RetroArch PCSX 2 core worked once and then never again, which to be fair is exactly what happened in Ubuntu. I don't know why, but that's exactly what happened. I then tried to build it with some 32-bit packages and that also didn't work. If I probably put a little bit more time into it, it probably would have worked, but that's okay. Some packages from Flatpak that worked or broke or fit 
or clashed with the GTK theme, including Qt applications, which is an obvious clash. Uh, Kden Live, which I mentioned, the Qt theme is at least Adwaita Dark. Adwaita, Adwaita, Adwaita. The gedit package from Flatpak didn't actually fit the GTK theme, even after installing some recommended extra setup. And I ended up going from the DNF package. So from here on out, I'm going to install everything that does exist in DNF from DNF rather than the Flatpak repo. Things like RetroArch, Steam, and Git Kraken were all installed perfectly fine. However, there's a few things to note. RetroArch has two packages in the GNOME Software Center, one that works and one that has less stars. Steam needed to be installed from DNF. When installed from Flatpak, I didn't have font faces, even after installing the Steam fonts package, which does ensure that I have Liberation fonts installed. Git Kraken can be misinstalled from the guide on the official website. However, a proper installation comes from the Flatpak repo in my case. My Windows C++ projects are mostly in shambles, and it's due to CMake not being able to find OpenGL right now. But that's my problem, and that's probably just something I need to work on. I miss Visual Studio over anything else. So most of the stuff that I had issues with were things that were personal to my build for my workflow, and things that I'm probably going to get working in the next couple of weeks. And um, if I do get some of these things working, I'll report back. And before I go, I do want to give a big shout out to the Fedora team for a solid release. 37 is awesome. And just to recap everybody's coverage that I've enjoyed so far, Jupiter Broadcasting's Lep from Sunday had a useful negative experience. Uh, someone had to have a bad time with Fedora 37, and I'm just glad it wasn't me this time. Late Night Linux featured Alan Pope, uh, even just this last couple of days here, who tried Silverblue. First person I've heard to try Fedora 37 Silverblue. Destination Linux, of course. Uh, Michael loves Fedora, so just go ahead and check that out. DistroTube for insightful information on DNF, and he always has great thoughts on any any uh, distro that comes around. And then, obviously, DJ Ware for the day one information throughout the release cycle. And last but not least, Brian Lunduke. He resonates all of my thoughts perfectly uh, in his video about Fedora. There was a time, not too long ago, well, many, many years ago, when Fedora was my favorite Linux distribution. It was a narrow window to be sure, but there was a period right around Fedora Core 6. That was a period of time when Fedora was something really special. It is a solid release and I really enjoy it. Um, you should check out his review on Fedora 37 if you haven't already. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.